Okay. So the natural numbers we often denote by capital N with a double bar, either down the left hand side like this, or some people write it like this, with a double bar down the middle, is a set of numbers that we used to count with one, two, three, four, and so on to infinity. So those are the natural numbers. The integers have all the natural numbers in them. So one is also an integer, two is also an integer, three is also an integer, four, five, six, and so on. But so is the number zero. And so is the number negative one and negative two and negative three and forever in this direction as well as the other direction. So those are two sets of numbers that we're gonna begin with, the natural numbers and the integers. And you've had plenty of experience with both these sets already. Um, if we start with two natural numbers and add them, we get a natural number, two plus four is six. If we start with two integers and add them, we get an integer. If we take two natural numbers and multiply them, we get an, um, a natural number. If we take two integers and multiply them, we get an integer. So you've had lots and lots of experience with, with these sets of numbers already. I wanna start off by factoring natural numbers. If I take a number like 10, I could factor 10 as two times five or five times two. So 10 is two times five, or it's five times two. And I can't factor these numbers any further than they are. Two and five are what are called prime numbers. So two and five have no factors other, so two, the only factors two has are one and two, the only factors in the natural numbers it has are one and two, and five, the only factors it has in the natural numbers are one and five. So a prime number, so here's a definition, a prime number, is a natural number greater than one a one is not considered a prime it's its own thing so one is is not considered a prime it's not considered a, a composite number either uh, so a prime number is a natural number greater than one that has only itself and one as factors. So if we start going through the numbers, one, as I said, is not prime. It's what's called a unit. Two is prime. Can't factor that any more than it is, other than two times one. Three is prime. Four is not prime because four is two times two. A number that's uh, not prime is called, depending on where you grew up, it's either called composite or composite, depending on how you pronounce that word. Both are fine. Five is prime. Six is not prime because six is two times three or three times two. So we have several composite numbers or composite numbers, several prime numbers, and one is its own thing. Um, let's go ahead and factor another number. Let's take a number like 12. So I can factor 12 as, say, 2 times 6. 12 is 2 times 6. Now, 2 is prime, but 6 is not. 6 factors further, 6 factors as 2 times 3. So 12 is equal to two times two times three. That's called its prime factorization. I could have started 12 slightly differently. I could have said 12 is uh, three times four, and the three doesn't factor anymore, but the four does. The four factors is two times two. And you can still see that in some order, I'm gonna get two twos and one three. And the only thing I can play around with there is the order in which I write those things down. So let's talk a little bit about 
the integers and negative numbers. Again, something that you almost certainly have a good amount of experience with. If I take something like um, something like the number seven and add it to the number negative eight, that's the same as writing seven minus eight, and this is negative one. If I take something like uh, negative seven and add it to negative eight, these are both minus, they move you to the left on the number line. So minus seven on the number line, going eight more spaces to the left on the number line, this is gonna be minus 15. And I have no objection at all with you using calculators to do arithmetic with positive and negative numbers, but you should understand what's going on. Multiplication in some ways is a little bit easier. If I take a number two and I multiply it by negative five, two times five we know is 10, but that minus sign, when you multiply a positive by a negative, you get a negative. But if I take negative two and multiply it by negative five, then you probably remember that a minus times a minus, a negative times a negative is a positive, two times five is 10, and the two minus signs cancel out. So remember that when you're multiplying or dividing, that two minus signs cancel out. If you have one minus sign, you'll end up with a negative answer. If you have three minus signs, then two of them cancel out, you'll end up with a negative answer and so on. So an odd number of negative signs means you're gonna end up with a negative answer. An even number of negative signs means you're gonna end up with a positive number. This only works if you're talking about multiplication and division. One more thing about division. One more thing about division, again, which is something that you have lots of experience with. You know that six divided by two, well, that's just six divided by two, that's three. What's the only number you can't divide by? Well, of course, if I take six divided by zero, that's nothing, that's garbage. This is, this is not defined. So don't forget, and this becomes super important when you start doing, when you start getting into algebra, which you, again, have experience with, you can't divide by zero. That comes up all the time in algebra. In arithmetic, it's totally obvious when you're dividing by zero because you can see it sitting there. In algebra, it's not always obvious that you're dividing by zero. You have to be a lot more careful, which is why I'm calling your attention to it now. 